that was awesome. Yeah. yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome once again. And we are here with the great Jack Roosh. Guy killed it the other night. The uh, Nashville Guitar Night, the underdog, throwing yeah. down. It was awesome. Got the trap, all the, all the players were there, and he just came in smooth as butter. It's awesome. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> so anyways, make sure to check out Jack's uh, links down below. He's got an awesome Patreon. I'm a subscriber to his Patreon. Stuff's killer. Really, really awesome. He's got a really great crew, uh, crew fire, true fire course as well. So make sure to check out all of his stuff. I'll leave his links down below. Awesome, awesome guitar teacher. So, Mr. Melodic Man. Cool. What, uh, what is the best place to jump off of like pentatonic scales? Like everybody is so reliant on those, but like how do you get out of that and just go all melody? So yeah, the, the trick for me is uh, chord tones. Okay. So getting away from thinking about scales entirely and getting away from thinking about sticking to a key center. Yeah. But identifying the notes that make up the chords you're playing over. You mean that and matters? Yeah, that matters. <laughs> like, it matters a little bit. I mean, if you wanted to. Right. But so so you take a chord progression and it all it, it all has to happen in the context of a song or a chord progression. So okay. It's the best way to practice is be working on a tune or working on how to improvise or how to solo or how to compose solos over a chord progression. So you take the chord progression, you look at the chords, and you can use your cage shapes mm -hmm. to identify how to play those chords in each position. Yes. You know, so that's kind of the first step is going, okay, I want to go from this chord to this chord. How can I do that without having to move up and down the fretboard? Yeah. But do it in one position. And then find your- show, show, them, show them what you mean by one position. So like what we were playing was um, E major um, to, uh, C sharp seven, right to F sharp minor, and then to B seven. Yeah. So like right there, I just did it all in that one position, yeah. right? So I could do it in this position. I could do E, C sharp seven, F sharp minor, B seven. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Kind of identifying the um, the cage shapes you need in one position yeah. to transition between the chords. For rhythm, that might not make the most sense playing wise because mm -hmm. some of those voicings yeah. can be a little weird and, yep. and kind of clunky. But when it comes to arpeggios, it's great because all yeah. those cage shapes are amazing for arpeggios, just but, like they are for scale patterns too. Yeah, and you know what's great too is sometimes in an improvising situation where somebody's like, come up and play, and you're like, oh God, <laughs> like, and you've yeah. never played something, but like if you know how to find all those chords in one spot, and it's in a key you're not familiar with, you can chill in one zone yeah, and get through what you need to do. Because if it's like a, you're playing with a horn section, it's like a flat key you've never played in yeah, or whatever. But absolutely. if you can see all those chords in a five fret span, you're going. Yeah. Like you're gonna Well, and it's it. really great because you can, you can slowly chip away at it. You can yeah. work at one position at a yep. time and build up a little bit of a vocabulary and get comfortable in that position mm -hmm. and then continue to move through all five positions. And then once you start to get comfortable with it and you're playing, you can hang out wherever you want to. So yeah. if you're playing up, uh, maybe you're building a solo up and you wind up in another position, you go, oh, cool, I can just hang out here for a little bit because yeah. I know this area pretty yep. well. And, and, and that's, that's what it's really all about is having freedom yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing about learning the fretboard, uh, using those cage shapes, you know, whatever you're trying to learn, you want to learn it everywhere so you have freedom to just move around. Yeah. So with the arpeggios, you know, I think it's important to practice them across all six strings. Okay. Uh, a lot of people will play arpeggios and they'll always start on the root of the chord and then uh -huh. just kind of go up. Yeah. But a lot of the positions, you've got other notes below that. Okay. You know, so like if I play... Uh, for instance, E major right here, you know, I've got my root, third, fifth, major seventh, root, third, fifth. But then I've also got yeah. the yeah. fifth and third below. Yeah. So you want to like see the complete picture there. I like what you have been doing. And even as you've been showing me, you're calling out the degrees as you play them. Yeah. So that's a big thing. I mean, you know, with guitar in particular, 
because it's such an easy instrument to transpose. You mm -hmm. literally just move your hand up and it's, you yeah. don't have to change fingerings or anything. Sure. Um, it's great to think in terms of intervals. Yeah. You know, I don't think like, you know, E, G sharp, B, yeah. you know, Notes. I think I think root yeah. third, fifth, major seventh, root, you know, and if I was making it dominant, it would be root third, fifth, flat seven. Yeah. Uh, well, because it, that, that, like what you're saying, transposing wise, it's still the same. You know, yeah, that yeah. shape is still, it's, it, rather than learning, I mean, the notes would be cool too, but like to start. Yeah, and if you're playing with somebody, if you're playing with a singer and they're like, hey, let's move this down a half step, mm -hmm. all of a sudden now you're in E flat. Yeah. You just, you know, you still think the same, you can s visualize the same shapes. Yep. You can still think intervals and nothing changes. Yeah. But yeah, as when I first started practicing arpeggios, I would do them really, doing them really slow is super important, obviously. Um, being accurate and being focused. Uh, this is the kind of thing that, it's best to practice like a few minutes a day and be really focused yeah. on it. Okay, so if, give them give my regimen. What's the what's the 10 minutes a day? So say, so let's just take this chord progression okay. as our kind of backdrop, our context. And so we're just gonna go through this one position. We're gonna find the E major seven arpeggio. Okay. So. There's our E major seven. So even just practicing that, if that's new, you can go really slow, call out the names of the intervals as you're playing. So third, fifth, major seventh, root, third, fifth, major seventh, root, third, fifth. Um, and now you wanna find the next chord in the progression, which is C sharp seven, and the chord position is right there. And so then you work through that arpeggio. And my fingerings are terrible, by the way, but that's not really so important. <laughs> right, it's more right, about right. like, it's a blueprint. It's a blueprint. I'm not a strict like sure. four, you know, right. finger, you know, yeah, my I'm fingerings are all over the place. Yeah. But it's more about seeing the roadmap, yeah. seeing the blueprint. You don't have to, that's why you don't have to work these things up super fast and be able to shred through them yeah. unless you want to. Yeah. Um, you just need to be able to like, as you're playing, see that. Yeah. And the big thing with transitioning between the chords is when you're playing the progression and you're playing on the E major chord and you know that C sharp seven is coming up, you wanna quickly be able to see like where those notes are yeah. and hear where those yeah. notes are too. So that's part of it too. As you're slowly working through it, you're also training your ear to really identify what those chord right. tones are. And that's why it's, um, can be more effective melodically using arpeggios than scales mm -hmm. because not every note in a scale works, really identifies yeah. the chord yep. and sometimes if you if you get trapped in scale playing the tendency can be sometimes to kind of meander through the mm -hmm. scale do you find a note that one worked you finally. wind up hanging may, i hear guys all the time they're playing and they're like i can see they're thinking scale yeah. and they're hanging on a note like they'll be hanging on the fourth yeah over a chord with a major third yeah in. and i can tell right away they're kind of the intent is not there yeah because if it was there they'd probably move that note down to the third or, yeah. or some other note. sure um it's it's all good if it's intentional. Yeah. If, if that's what you intend to do yeah. and you mean it, and, right? You know, and you're hearing it, then that's good. But so so that's the first two chords, and then you have uh, let's see, F sharp minor, and then you've got B seven. So that's this kind of like a D shape. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird this chord that I never play. Never can I, do yeah. it. Um, but it's. <laughs> Again, that's an example. You're not really going to no. necessarily play that chord. Um, You'll play that shape all the time in blues, though. But this, yeah. That little D minor shape. Yeah. 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 So that's great. And then you have the B7, which again is this G shape from mm -hmm. the cage. So. So the first step is just kind of like playing through those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Um, you know, going really slow. And just getting comfortable with the shapes. 
And then there's all kinds of little like uh, exercises you can do, like voice leading exercises. What's which, voice leading? So this is like a really common kind of practice with like jazz, playing jazz standards and stuff, um, where you basically you're going to play like one measure for each chord, and mm -hmm. you're just going to play eighth notes, and you're going to go through the arpeggio. So okay. you you play. Um, eight notes of the arpeggio and then wherever you land that's mm -hmm. where you're going to switch gears to the next arpeggio oh interesting and if you're ascending you're going to continue ascending if you're descending you're going to continue descending until you reach the yeah. end and then repeat so like if i started mm. if i and you like i'll count out loud the eighth notes so you would have uh one two three four five six seven eight and then you would go to c seven uh, c sharp seven so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sad how the jazz guys do it. Yeah. I always wondered, like, how do they get through chords so good like that? Especially yeah. when they're like humming by, you know what I mean? It's just like, how do you learn the Yeah, well, like what's that? cool about that is if you start on a different note of the arpeggio, it's always going to yeah. change over in a different spot. So, you know. Oh, that's a good idea. Right, so you can pick a different degree from the arpeggio to start from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, my God, that makes you really know it. Sorry, I can't talk and do yeah. that at the same time. Yeah, it's like, you, yeah, so, well, that'll help you, because uh, the whole thing with the, the arpeggios are kind of this blueprint of yeah. like, okay, here's all the chord tones in this spot. Yeah. There they all are. But that doesn't necessarily give you any guidance into what to do with it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like learning a scale. You yep. learn the scale, and you go, "Okay, well, now what? how do I make music yeah. with this?" Um, so that'll Cartoons. get you start. That'll get you started um, seeing how to move from one chord to the next. Yeah. And then what I what I suggest doing once you kind of get well, and you could do this all kind of simultaneously. Yeah. You can learn the shapes while you start figuring out how to use them. Yeah. For sure. You don't have to like master right the arpeggios before you can start using it. Um you kind of learn you study both at the same time as 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 much as you can focus in on the arpeggios do that for a while and then try uh try composing some lines with it yeah so a trick that i do all the time is i'll like compose little solos like say okay. i'm just going to go through one time of uh, that chord progression mm -hmm. and i'm just going to use this position and these notes all all that stuff's going to be kind of uh the ingredients that okay. i'm going to use so I'll take a phrase, I'll say, okay, well, what if I play, um, you know, there's a nice like E major pentatonic phrase. Mm -hmm. It's right out of this chord. Yeah. You know, I'm starting on the third, five, six root. Yeah. Then I go, okay, uh, how do I get to C sharp seven? So I'm seeing this chord. I can even play through the arpeggio real quick just to refresh myself. Yeah. And then I go, okay, I'm on this note. Well, if I move that up a half step, there's the third to that chord. So, and I can do a little chromatic move, something nice. to kind of lead it into that. And then there I can do, okay, well, I can play more of that arpeggio I want. If I want, I can something like that, like third, fifth, seven, flat seven. You know something else sure. to kind of flesh that out and then i'm and then i'm immediately seeing you know this arpeggio and going okay well how do i get to that i can do some you know i can do whatever i yeah. want i can do you know and then there's my b uh, and now I kind of change positions, yeah. but there's my B7, right? So then you kind of string all that together. Uh, 
I can't, so many people want to know how to be able to do just that. And the interesting thing is uh, everyone's taught like if you learn the scale, that's how you become melodic. And it's like, in my experience and you know, you, Guthrie Trapp, Tim Pierce, all these other people I've worked with, it's way more of a chord approach than mm-hmm. anything. So, sometimes they're not even thinking about scales. Like I remember, and I've said this before in videos, but like talking to Tim or whoever the great player was like, oh, what what's yeah. the scale shape is that? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They have an idea, you know, like just because they're familiar because they played for so long, but they're way more concerned about if somebody does this with a chart, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not always going to be in a key, you know what I mean? So if it yeah, yeah. fluctuates in and out, you're screwed if you only know how to think. Absolutely. You know, scale-wise in one key, you know? Well, it, the scale approach works um, with... It's, it it, it yeah. works with simple uh, diatonic progressions yeah. where maybe you just have like three-note triads sure. and everything fits nicely in a key. Yeah. Um, because if it's if it's a really simple progression... It might sound a little weird to be like just playing out of these three note arpeggios. Yeah. Whereas you can flow a little bit more with a scale, play a little bit more melodically. Yeah. But when you have chords that need special attention, yeah. Like this, where it's not all diatonic. Uh-huh. And a blues, by the way, is not diatonic, like a dominant blues. Okay. You know, if you're playing a one, four, five, and they're all dominant chords, yeah. That's not diatonic. Yeah. Because. Diatonic harmony would never have the one chord be a dominant chord. Right. You know, it's just, it's Give already... an example of what that means. So like if, if you're don't. playing A7, D7, E7, you mm-hmm. know, if you're playing... Uh, you know, this kind yeah. of a blues thing. Um, so we I can never play. <laughs> we, we all play. We all play the pentatonic stuff over that. Sure. Which is kind of the scale approach. We're yeah. just going to kind of paint over it with this, you know, wide brush. Yeah. Of like we can use this, and that definitely stylistically can be really great. And yeah. Can be yeah. Appropriate. Sure. I mean, there's plenty of players. Yeah. You know, Albert King, Otis yeah. Rush. That's what those guys did. Yeah. And they had incredible feel, and it all worked, and nobody nobody but had a problem with it. Singers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or a lot of those great players were singers too. So it's still not a scale. I think they're hearing what they would say. Oh, it's sing. definitely melodic. Yeah. And, and the phrasing is impeccable. Yeah. And the feel. Um, and, you know, and that's great. But uh, for a lot of people, you get kind of, you get stuck in a corner with that and you start to get a little limited. Mm-hmm. So by understanding that, okay, well, these chords... Um, there isn't really one scale that fits all these chords. You yeah. can play the mixolydian or like a dominant scale over the A7. Okay. You know? But that doesn't fit over the D7 because D7 has C in it, and that's not in the, the A mixolydian scale. Okay. So you can think of it as three different scales, but then you run into that problem of like, well, not every note in that mixolydian scale uh, Technically outlines works. Yeah. the chord. Well, I mean, it works, but it doesn't outline the chord. If you're yeah. hanging on the four yeah. or the six or something, it's not really driving home the sound of that chord. But if you yeah, there's our three arpeggios in that one position. Yeah. Now you combine that with your blues. Yeah. starting to flesh out the sound of those chords yeah, yeah yeah so the same thing going back to our other progression um you know we've got the same thing going on because we're playing in the key of a mm-hmm. or key of e sorry and but we're going to c sharp seven okay so that's um you know that's a secondary dominant chord mm-hmm. so normally in diatonic land the c sharp chord would be a minor six chord in the key of e Okay. You know, if we go through our E major scale and we play our harmonized chords, we have one major, two minor, three minor, four major, uh, five major, 
6 minor, 7 diminished, or 7 half diminished, and then uh, back to E major. So when we change that from minor to a dominant chord, mm -hmm. the reason for that, that's a secondary dominant chord, and the reason for that is it leads us to, yeah. to F sharp minor. Right. It's the 5 chord of F sharp minor. So, I mean, that's getting a little bit more into yeah. like, the function of the chords and the harmony. Sure. Um, but basically, uh, all that is, is you've got a note in there that's not diatonic that needs yeah. to be addressed, that third. So, and you can play really simple lines. I mean, you can play, there's E, and then just, just raise that one note. There's the root of F sharp, and then there's the third of that. You know, simple things. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I'm just seeing those chord yeah. shapes, you know. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to play that progression. Play just standard pentatonic blues that would that you could play over that ish okay stick to that land i, I would stick major pentatonic yeah yeah Pen, yeah major pentatonic did i say minor pentatonic well no no okay <laughs> i'm just clarifying right, right, okay that's good um and then uh go let me go through two passes of that okay. and then start peppering in the other stuff so people okay, can really can you that. know what i mean so you can see how it, it can evolve yeah, into a sound cool. ready i'm gonna get to turn on my guitar I love the end chord. But see, that's yeah. the coolest thing because it's like that at the end, that little touch of yeah. arpeggio and stuff is just so much cool. I shouldn't say cooler. It's it's just different. You know what I mean? It's not yeah, like yeah. if you go to a bar nine times out of ten, you're going to hear the the blues lick, which is great, especially if the pl person does it with great feel. But on that tenth time you go and somebody busts that out, you're like, whoa, what was that? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? It like, well, and, it, and it's, and it's sucks all, you in. the thing about it is it's all good. Like, yeah. You, you know, every new thing, like if you start getting into chord tones, it's not to replace anything that you no. already do. It's just to add to it. Those major pentatonic phrases are still gold. Legit, yeah. You know, and if you're building a solo, you can you can do exactly like that yep. and really stick to simple phrases. There's obviously like, there's just really one note you want to avoid on the C sharp seven chord, and that's um, the root, the E note. Okay. Because that's... That's the minor third yeah. of C sharp minor. And you've got this really strong yeah. major third. So yeah. that's just kind of an avoid note or a note to just address and move up. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then, yeah, you, you, can, you can basically voice lead through this whole thing. Right, and then you can stay there. Yeah. You know. Uh, just looking at, you know, there's the root of E, the third of C sharp, the root of F sharp, and then that's also the fifth of B, you know, or or uh, or you can go down to the third. So just seeing those relationships, but it it all comes down to um, seeing these chord shapes. So you know, that's one position. You just keep moving through the positions. So you've got E major, you know, C sharp. Uh, Let's see, F sharp minor, and then B7, right? So you can... Right, 
right? Yeah. So there's the same thing. So you can hang out in these different positions. Um, you know, and just work mm -hmm. your way through these different Dude. chord tones. Yeah. You're a Mr. Melody, man. Yeah. Well, it's cool, man, because then you can, uh, you know, this is just one progression. You can apply this to anything. Yeah. Right? Anything you're working on, any song. It really works in a lot of songs. Uh, you know, I I teach a lot of guys that, like, they play in bands. They play in cover bands mm -hmm. and stuff. And, um, you know, there's always songs that come up in a set list that might be a problem. Yeah. Like, like sitting on the dock of a bit. Totally. The day is a good one because it's totally. these secondary dominant chords. You've got, you know, G to B7 yeah. right there, you know, that's not diatonic. And then C and then to A7. Yeah. So again, two secondary dominant chords. So this kind of thing, if you can see that, you know, right, you can, you can get Even through that. Even that sounds cool, man. <laughs> You know, uh, just getting through those chords. Yeah, so just seeing that, you know, seeing those chord tones. Who's somebody, like one artist that really just hammers this home that's easy, that isn't like, because it's easy to say a monster player, but like, who's somebody with really simple, great phrasing that kind of, in a mainstream context that does this kind of thing? It can be any genre uh i mean there's a ton of of players that do this kind of thing i mean piano players yeah. do this kind of stuff all yeah. the time because the chords are all right there. yeah they're all laid out sure so i mean you you hear piano players solo and it's always outside of the chords it's yeah. never like just a scale floating yeah. around sure that's more of something guitar players get kind of stuck doing yeah um, okay, give but us guitar one. player, like I mean, Larry Carlton is okay. a great example. I yeah. mean, he's always playing out of triads and he's always playing chord tones, and it's always like okay, it's always really intentional and fits yeah. right within the chord. Is there a even well, if he's he has playing solo blues, records, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah tons yeah. of good ones. Huh? What's a good one? Um, I mean, they're all good. I really like the the. What's the the blue the Sapphire Blues record Sapphire Blues Band record? Okay, it's a blues record, but I just really like that one. He did it here in Nashville with a bunch of amazing players. It's got a horn section. It's all, it seems all there is in this town is amazing. Uh, that's a really good. That's just a really good record. Um, who's a um, who's like a great R and B player that does that kind of stuff? Oh man, I mean all, all all those guys play great stuff out of the chords. I mean obviously. You, I, I really love, uh, some people might not know about Teeny Hodges, but Teeny Hodges played with Al Green. He's on all, okay. the, all that Memphis, uh, the early Al Green records. Yeah. Um, he's a phenomenal guitar player, rhythm guitar player, and does a lot of, all the great fills, yeah. little, you know, double stop things. He's incredible. Cornell Dupree, who's another Memphis guy who did a lot of recording in New York with like Aretha Franklin and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a ton of, you know. Legit. Yeah, he's incredible. Um, Sweet. And then Reggie Young, who was here in Nashville really? for a long time, but also Reggie Young's incredible. I mean, he played uh, a lot of fame sessions like Wilson Pickett. Yeah. And, and he's on, um, you know. You know, oh, The yeah. Son of a Preacher Man yeah. and uh, Drift Away, yeah. That song, uh, well, I can't, I can't remember it, but uh, I don't want to, yeah, yeah, totally. just, just completely <laughs> destroy Butcher. that right here, <laughs> totally. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then he played on like a ton of like country sessions too, like yeah. Alan Jennings, and but he's incredible. Um, all those guys, yeah, man, all those guys, all all those session guys did knew what was up with they the chords totally and, did, and man. knew how to fit everything. You know, I mean, I, even if you listen to. Um, I mean, I'm not a big rock guy, as but you know, Steve Lukather yeah, plays out of the chords. Monster. You know? It's it's not monster. Just uh, scale stuff. Yeah. It's you know, 
Yeah, it's all, all the session guys, they have to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But the crazy thing is Lukather or any of the session guys that you mentioned, any of like the wrecking crew or any of those people, it's so crazy that they did all that stuff in like one to three takes. It's like, here's your chart, one, two, three, go. <laughs> <laughs> just able well, to like um, hammer that stuff home. It's just like I'm sure. I, I'm sure any of those guys would tell you it's it's like it all comes down to fundamentals. Yeah, I mean it's just like it's like anything. It's like sports. They yeah. always talk about like you've got to focus on the fundamentals. Yeah, you've got to focus on like the little things. Yeah, and like this kind of stuff. This is like ground zero, step one for playing over changes. Yeah. You know, you want to outline the changes. This is, this right. is how you do it. What's do you do that in your Patreon? I don't mean to cut yeah. you off, but just uh, um, do you do that in your Patreon, where it's like step one, step two, step three kind of stuff? Or um, I have some. So my Patreon's kind of linked up with the YouTube Videos. lessons that okay. I do, and then I'll put up. Um, uh, I do put up like a lot of tabs and diagrams mm -hmm. on there. So I do have a lesson on like basic blues arpeggios, like over a one, four, five, okay. and all the diagrams laid out. So yeah. it'll literally be like, you don't have to do the work of going, okay, what's the position for this chord? Sure. It's all right there. It's like, okay, that A position fits yeah. with that D position yeah. and fits with that E position. Yeah. And there's the arpeggio. So I'll just run through that and then Mm -hmm. move up through the five shapes sure it's it helps so much i think that yeah. like the chord tone thing that you're talking about even if you're taking um the pentatonic stuff like the and the cage course that i have it's like the pentatonic since everybody knows that already it's just showing people how to see chords inside like shape one like mm -hmm. here's your whole chord progression right here yeah and it's yeah. like you only have to hit one or two of the like do your your blues licks but just honor the chord for one note and yeah, just yeah. that alone starts to make you sound so much more melodic or knowing that you can hang on a bend or why you're bending somewhere. Yeah, you know it all I mean? just comes down to intention. Like you should be able to be at a point where if somebody stops you at any point of your solo yeah. and goes, why are you playing that note? Yeah. You have an answer. You can yeah. be like, well, because it fits over this chord. Cause? You know, or, or, and it doesn't have to necessarily be like a right. theory based thing. Yeah. You could be like, well, because this part of the progression, I've played all this melodic stuff. Yeah. Now I want to play something nasty sure. and blues. <laughs> right, exactly. So I'm doing that here. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there should be some intention behind everything. You're yeah, doing. a lot of intention. Well, and, that, and that's um, the, the players when you go see and you're like, oh my God, they mean what they're playing. Like Stevie Ray Vaughan meant to play the note that he played. There's like no. Absolutely. <laughs> Even when he's playing, uh, yeah, uh, what's the one song where, where it's like major seven chords and he's just playing minor pentatonic yeah. over the whole thing. Yeah. But it, yeah. But it works. It, it was meant Because be. he just like, this is the conviction, I think. And that's mm -hmm. the, the other thing that a lot of people are striving for when they're playing that they don't like about their playing is it doesn't sound confident. And I think a lot of people want to sound like they meant to do what they're doing and that's what you're saying to the, right now is exactly how you get there yeah it's just baby steps you take one position yeah. at a time you take a chord progression that is easy uh you want to practice things that like are digestible like mm -hmm. don't bite off more than you can chew but take something that you know the chord progression we played had a major seventh chord in it two dominant seventh chords and a minor seventh chord yeah. so there's three different chord qualities in there but you can take a blues, yeah, which is all dominant chords. You could take a minor blues with two minor chords and a dominant chord, whatever, mm -hmm. um, to just kind of get started working it out and take yeah. simple chord progressions. And then even like I work on a lot of standards and stuff where there are a lot of chords, um, but I still, I'll break it down into pieces. Yeah. So like I'll practice the first four bars mm -hmm. and then link that up to the next four bars and try to you know figure out ways to navigate through these things and weave through the chords yeah that's where it's at yeah. money yeah. sweet all right so make sure you check out jack's stuff down below i'll leave his links do you, do you have your own website i feel like i've i do led people somewhere before uh, i do okay. it's a work in progress okay it's gonna get better it's something i've up. got a youtube channel i've okay. got my my instagram is right. like ground central that's awesome. where i'm that's where I'm. Uh, yeah, that's step most one. Known. Yeah, and then uh, 
the True Fire course, the Patreon. Yeah. Uh, my fans only page. That's a <laughs> different video. <laughs> Yeah. You change hats all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's a different awesome. Topic. So I'll leave all that stuff below. I'll leave uh, his website. It's definitely check out his Instagram for sure. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I got to listen to that. It's just gold. And then the Patreon thing is sick because it's the jam track and tab and it's amazing. It's yeah. all great. His True Fire course is awesome too. Don't be afraid to check it all out. You will definitely, definitely walk away with something that you can use every day. You guys are amazing. Thank you so, so much. And don't forget, brettpapa.com supports everything that you see here. It gets all these guests in here. Check that out. Just like we were talking, there is a full caged course there too. So if you want to dive deep in caged, check that out as well. Thanks a lot. Catch you next time.